to Dan Tortora. Dan, go ahead. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, Dan? I'm doing well. And just what you can say about, uh, you know, how the process has been uh, through practice and whatnot and how the players are as a community. I know you guys have sat out a couple of times. Dino said it was uh, duly noted and that he understood why you guys did. Just what you took from that and, and moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I, a lot of it is just miscommunication between uh, players and staff uh, at times. Uh, guys are really just worried about their, their safety and their overall health going into the season. You know, this is something that none of us are used to. Um, so uh, as players, we just want to make sure that we're uh, as protected as possible. And as far as that, what can you say about uh, the plans that are put in place and kind of the protocol and all that, if you feel safe and if you feel like Syracuse is, is giving you the best opportunity to move forward toward a healthy season? Yeah, I mean, when I look at the work that uh, Syracuse's university has had and, and our, our staff has had, our, our medical staff, uh, I feel very comfortable. You know, we've been going uh, with weekly testing during camp, and then as we move forward towards the season, it'll be three times a week. Uh, I mean, I'm very happy with that going forward. Um, I feel like uh, the, the staff really, really wants us to feel feel good and feel comfortable and, and, and feel safe so we can really focus on football. So I'm, I'm very pleased with with the, uh, the precautions and the, the measures that uh, our staff is taking. Thank you, Aaron, and stay safe. Thank you, you too. Next, we'll go to Darius Joshua from News Channel 9. Darius? Along those lines, what kind of updates do you get from opponents in terms of what, what's Coach Babers, you know, John Wildhack, what kind of updates did they give you on what the conference itself is going to do, potentially trying to match what Syracuse is doing for everyone across the across the board? Yeah, I mean, to my understanding, uh, the, the ACC as a whole is, is, is going to be going into that same, you know, three times a week testing protocol. Um, so I'm, I'm very glad that uh, not only are we going through that to feel safe here, but our opponents are, are, are going to be going through that as as well so uh it, it, so i can feel more comfortable and more safe you know stepping out there on saturdays and then kind of with that too a couple of acc opponents unc and, and notre dame going to online classes what, what kind of reaction do, do you as a player do your teammates kind of have to that when you see that the campus life kind of hasn't um or isn't off to a, such a great start for a lot of these schools that are trying to have in-person classes yeah you know it's it's interesting when you when you start seeing all the uh the, the students returning to campus and, and some of the uh the different things that have popped up, uh, you know, regarding UNC and Notre Dame, things like that. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, as a university as, at Syracuse, you know, we can we can take examples like that and use it as a, a learning example to kind of show people, you know, that there there is a certain way to do things, and that uh, that if you don't follow those those guidelines and that are set up by not not only the university but you know the CDC as a whole, wearing your mask, social distancing, things like that. Uh, that you can get some dump. And I, I think, you know, I, I can't really speak for the whole student body, but I know for myself, you know, I, I love being here at Syracuse and I want to be able to stay on campus and, and go to my classes and, and do what I need to do to not only pursue my football career, but my educational career as well. Um, so I hope, you know, uh, our student body is also seeing some of that kind of stuff in, in the news and in the media, and they can kind of take a lesson from it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Nate Mink from Syracuse.com. Nate? Aaron, I appreciate you um, sitting down and, and trying to answer what are immensely complicated questions, one of which I'm, I'm going to ask you now. Um, you know, it looks like the, uh, the NCAA is, is likely going to come down um, with giving you guys an exit ramp later this week in, in terms of eligibility and whatnot. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit more personally why you are comfortable taking on sort of the risks, both known and unknown with a new with a new virus that you know could potentially compromise or alter you know what you're able to do athletically as a guy who is quite frankly looking to play at the next level yeah so i mean i i i've had all those same questions and i've had all those same concerns and um you know looking at a looking at it from a syracuse standpoint and and with our, our staff and our players um i think we've we've done a good job of, of raising some of the concerns that we have as a team. And I, I think that the staff has done a really, really good job of uh, being receptive of that, that kind of stuff and, and really listening to some of the concerns that we have and, and really pushing for, you know, different protocols and different guidelines just to help us feel more comfortable. And, you know, from a personal standpoint, 
Um, you know, I've, I've seeked out different people, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to different cardiologists to just to try to get as much information as I can and, and, and really understand, you know, what my risks are, you know, we're playing a game where every time you step on the field, there's always going to be a risk, uh, you know, of, of injury of, of whatever. Um, so it's another one of those things that, you know, are you willing to accept the risks of stepping on the field? And uh, you know, COVID is just another one of the risks that's already, or it's, it's an added risk that's a part of a, a risk that we risk that we already are dealing with. Um, so for me personally, uh, I've just been trying to get as much information as I can, <laughs> talk to as many people as I can, uh, so I can make the most, you know, knowledgeable decision that I can. Um, so I have been actively seeking out people to talk to and and um, doing things like that. I, I'm not I'm not sure you know exactly what all goes into kind of your, your personal life and your family history and things, other things that you have to consider, but is there something that would kind of raise your alarm uh, that could come down the pike that would force you or, or cause you to decide, Hey, I don't, I don't want to take this risk anymore. And, and knowing that you, you potentially have, you know, up until maybe mid October to, to opt out and still be able to save you uh, save your last year. Yeah, I mean, so for me, uh, I don't have any, you know, really pressing thing like that right now. One of the biggest things uh, that I did have an issue with, or not necessarily an issue, but something I wanted to know more about uh, was the whole myocarditis aspect of COVID and how that um, can possibly play a role in my life. So like I, like I said, I've, I've been reaching out to different cardiologists and I've been able to connect with different people 